Hello everybody! Welcome back to Cooking with Twigs. How's everybody doing? Um, did everybody find my last video helpful? Um, I kind of had a sit and chat with me session about um, IBS and I, I tried to give you guys tips on what I do to help me and gave you insight onto my personal journey. I hope it helped. I'm going to have another um, sit and chat time uh, a little bit down the road, but today uh, we're going to cook some more, and today I'm going to teach you guys about gravy. It's all about the gravy, baby. So I'm going to teach you the difference between white gravy and brown gravy today. It, there's not a lot to it, so hopefully this video will be short and sweet, and uh, you'll be learn something that you didn't know. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to start with my brown gravy. The reason I have a cast iron skillet here is because earlier today I made a stuffed uh, pork loin and I want some brown gravy to go with my pork. Uh, you typically make brown gravy for... Um, actually there's not typically. You can make brown gravy for anything. You can make ground gravy uh, for chicken if you want to make it for chicken. Um, obviously you can make it for pork, you can make it for steak, and there's a bunch of different variations of brown gravy that you can do. Um, I'm going to show you the basic one, and then I'm going to switch and show you the basic version of white gravy. So let me get started here. So. Um, I'm gonna have two, actually no, I'm gonna do three tablespoons of uh, unsalted butter. I have my pan on um, about medium here. And I'm going to zhuzh this around in my pan because I have brown bits in here from the, oh, sorry guys. I have brown bits in here from the uh, my pork loin. So I seared my pork loin in here before I put it in the oven. So all of the brown bits that are stuck on my pan, I gotta get all of these off of here with my whisk. It's another reason why using a whisk is important when you're making gravy is so that it gets uh, the brown bits and the flavorings um, off of the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to turn this up just a tad because this is on the little burner. I wanted these to be side by side today so you can see. Alright. Okay, got all that going now. So now what I'm going to grab is my flour. Again, I use whole wheat white flour, okay? So the fact that this is not um, regular all-purpose flour uh, is also going to help with the coloring, okay? So I did three tablespoons of butter, so I'm going to do the same amount in flour. Two. And... around. I keep putting my oven mitt on because remember what I said um, a couple videos back about working with a skillet? The whole thing gets hot. With this pan over here, I can touch this with my bare hands and I'll be okay. With this pan, the whole thing gets hot, including the handle. So, gotta be careful when you're working with skillets. Alright, so, I'm going to make sure that the uh, flour absorbs all the butter here. It's okay if it's in big clumps. You're going to smooth it out in just a second. Okay, so uh, typical ingredients for brown gravy is your pan drippings or whatever uh, little bits you have in your pan, whether it's chicken, pork, steak, whatever. Keep the, uh, the drippings and the bits in there. It's butter. 
It's flour, which we've already done. Next one is chicken stock, okay? I'm gonna do two cups of chicken stock. again because you want to mix it up you got to babysit it for a little bit to make sure that you get all of the flour loosened up so that it absorbs all of the yummy liquid because that's how it that's how it thickens that's what thickens your gravy is the flour okay now if you by chance add too much liquid or you do not add enough flour, you can thicken it a different way. You can thicken it with a mixture of cornstarch and water, okay? So I would start out with, you get a separate, a separate bowl, okay? You don't just put it in the pan, but you get a, a separate bowl and you do, uh, I'd probably start out with uh, like a teaspoon of cornstarch and to two teaspoons uh, of water and you put that in a bowl and then you take a fork and you uh, uh, whisk it up until the cornstarch dissolves, okay? And then you add that to your liquid, okay? But don't do that unless you've been standing here whisking for a while and your gravy is just not getting to the thickness that you want it to get to, okay? Don't add it right off the bat thinking that you just need to add it because then your gravy could become too thick and then you'll have to go back and add more liquid. So, all right, so I have all of that stirred together and look at this color, guys. Can you see, can you see the color? This is so, it, it's just a pretty color. I mean, I know it's brown, but it's a pretty brown. So, now what I'm gonna add is a little bit of salt. I'm gonna be a nerd for just one second, you guys. I have always wanted to do this where you put the salt in one little ramekin and then you put the pepper in the other little ramekin and then you do it with your fingers and then you, oh. I've watched way too many cooking shows and I love to do this way too much. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but this excites me. <laughs> okay, so stir that together. All right, you see how it's starting to bubble? I hope you can see it, otherwise somebody's going to have to pay me a lot of money to get a camera crew. But it's starting to bubble in the center, so that's good, that's what you want, that's how you know that it's thickening. But you don't want to let it sit too long because you don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan, okay? So gravy takes patience because you have to stand here and babysit it, but uh, it's worth it, trust me. All right, so that's it, guys. This is brown gravy. That's it. So because I made pork today, now I could just stop and have this be my gravy. This is perfectly fine, okay? But um, I want to make apple cider gravy today because I made stuffed pork loin, okay? So now what I'm going to do to take it a step further is I'm going to add a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, okay? So technically today I'm making apple cider gravy, okay? So the ingredients for apple cider gravy is pan drippings, three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of whole wheat white flour, two cups of chicken stock, and I used low sodium chicken stock, half a cup of apple cider vinegar, 
pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Okay? Now, I'm going to try this real fast to make sure that I don't need to add more salt and or more pepper. It's hot, y'all. God dang! Mmm! Love gravy! Okay, this is finished. I'm gonna turn this burner off. I'm just gonna let this hang out. Moving on. White gravy. Turn my burner on medium. This is the big burner, so I'm actually just gonna leave it um, on medium. What was that? All right, white gravy. Start out with the same uh, deal, butter. Now, white gravy, you don't have to start out with pan drippings. It helps, but you don't have to. You can totally make gravy from scratch like I'm doing right now, and it'll taste just fine. So, uh, Gonna do the same thing. One, two, three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Whisk that around, get it all melted together. All right, now three tablespoons of my flour, whole wheat, white flour, two, three, that was a little shy of a tablespoon, so we'll just add a little bit more. All right, same thing, stir it together, make sure the flour soaks up all the butter. You want to get it to where most of the flour kind of looks like, kind of looks like, kind of looks like Play-Doh, to be honest with you. Doesn't that kind of look like Play-Doh? You can tell I have a kid. All right. So, now, white gravy, instead of doing two cups of chicken stock, we're doing two cups of milk, okay? And in all honesty, that is the main difference. If you want brown gravy, you add stock, whether it's chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, if you really want to. Uh, if you want white gravy, you add milk or you add heavy cream or you add half and half. That's the difference. The base is the same. The ratios are the same. It's just a matter of whether or not you want white versus brown. Now I actually am gonna use this white gravy that I made today because I uh, gonna make me some biscuits in the morning for breakfast. Biscuits and gravy, uh, mm, yes please. Okay, so I'm going to finish making this, but I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to throw one more curveball at you, all right? Have you ever heard of the term bechamel sauce? Yes, no, maybe so? All right, so bechamel Sounds all fancy. What it means is a white cheese sauce. So if you wanna make your own bechamel sauce, you literally make white gravy like I'm doing right now. And then just before it gets to the thickness that you want it to get to, you turn off the heat and you add cheese. 
and you whisk the cheese in and get it to whatever consistency you want it to get to. And that's it. All right, my white gravy is thickening up here. Now, there's different variations that you can do to white gravy as well. Um, you can add uh, breakfast sausage. Um, if you crumble up some breakfast sausage before you make the gravy, you can keep the pan drippings from the breakfast sausage in the pan and you can make your gravy and then add the sausage back into the gravy after it thickens up. That's really good. You can make a black pepper gravy where you just overload it with black pepper. Um, there's different variations you can do to each one of these. Okay, so I'm going to do a pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. You can add garlic to your gravy. You can add different spices to your gravy. You can add herbs to your gravy. You can add, honestly, the sky's the limit. I mean, have you ever watched Chopped? They make delicious food out of the weirdest ingredients. So you can make gravy out of almost anything if you really want to. All right. See how it's bubbling and it's thickening up? So I'm gonna turn it down, I'm gonna let it hang out. And it does thicken as it sits. So if it's almost to where you want it, but you don't want it to get too thick and you don't wanna have to fix it, then honestly, turn the heat off and just let it sit for a couple minutes and then whisk it and then you should be good to go. So you see, it's just about the same as the brown. I'm gonna give the white Gravy a taste to make sure that I don't need to add anything else. This is another good indicator too. Look at my spoon, y'all. So if you dip your spoon in here and go like this, see how it coats the back of the spoon? That's how you know that it's thick enough, okay? If you dip your spoon in here and you can see the back of the spoon and, and it doesn't cover anything, you need to keep going, all right? I personally think it needs more pepper. All right, guys. That's it. I hope I taught y'all something today. I'm going to let these cool down. And then I'm going to store them away in my containers. Gravy keeps uh, up to a week. As long as you keep it refrigerated, make sure you keep it in an airtight container. And that's it. All right, turn this off. That's off already. That's all I got for you today, guys.